The law of sines cannot be used directly to solve triangles if we know two sides and the angle between them, or if we know all three sides. Therefore, we need another formula for trying to deal with those types of problems. We have the law of cosines. The law of cosines says for any triangle ABC, side A squared is going to equal B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of angle A. Or if you were looking for side B, instead you'd do B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC, the cosine of angle B. Or if you were trying to find side C squared, it would be A squared plus B squared minus 2AB, the cosine of angle C. I want you to see the pattern here. The side that we're looking for is always equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus 2 times the other two sides times the cosine of the angle that corresponds with the side you're looking for. Now we can also use the law of cosines to find a missing angle in a triangle. In order to do that, in class we derived one of these formulas for uh, finding angle A, and we found out that angle A was going to equal the inverse cosine of side A squared minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2BC. Or if you're trying to find angle B, you would do the inverse cosine of B squared minus A squared minus C squared over negative 2AC. Or if you were trying to find angle C, you would do the inverse cosine of C squared minus A squared minus B squared over negative 2AB. Again, notice that there's kind of a pattern to how these formulas for finding the missing angle work. Now, when you do one of these problems in your calculator, it's best to evaluate what's inside the parentheses first before taking its inverse cosine. A tunnel is built through a mountain. To estimate the length of the tunnel, a surveyor makes the measurements shown in the figure. Use the surveyor's data to approximate the length of the tunnel. So the surveyor is at point C, and he notes that from point C to one side of the mountain, point A, is 388 feet, and from himself to a point on the other side of the mountain, point B, is 212 feet, and the angle between those two lengths is 82.4 degrees. So to find the length of the missing side of this triangle we've just formed, the side we're looking for, which is side AB, is going to equal the square of the other lengths added minus 2 times the two other lengths times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, when you do this in your calculator, you have to remember that at the end of the problem you have to square root the answer because the side we're finding using the law of cosines is already squared. So if you plug this into your calculator and then you square root the answer, you should find out that length AB is approximately 416.8 or you can say 417 feet long. When you can't use the law of sines to start a problem, we always start with the law of cosines. The thing about the law of cosines is once you use it one time, you don't need to use it again. You're more than welcome to go use the law of sines to finish the problem off. So in this next example, which is a side-side-side problem, the sides of a triangle are lengths 5, 8, and 12. Find the angles of the triangle. So here's your general ABC triangle. Side A is 5, side B is 8, and side C is 12. I need to determine what angle I want to start by finding. It really doesn't matter which one you start with. I usually start with whatever is first alphabetically, which would be A. So in order to find the cosine of angle A, I need to do, oops, not the cosine of angle A, because we already said it's going to be the inverse cosine. Okay, angle A is going to be the inverse cosine of A squared 
minus b squared minus c squared over negative 2 times b times c. Now what I would do is I would evaluate this part in my calculator first. Then I would do the inverse cosine. And we should find out that angle A is approximately 18 degrees. Well now that we know A is 18 degrees, we can use the law of sines to find angle B. So now I can do the sine of 18 degrees over 5 is going to equal the sine of angle B over 8. I'm going to cross multiply, take the inverse sine, and I'm going to find out that B is approximately 29 degrees. Well, once you find angle B, now you don't have to use the law of sines or the law of cosines to find angle C. To find angle C, all you have to do is 180 minus 18 minus 29. It'll be 133. Now let's do an example where I give you a side, an angle, and a side. Solve triangle ABC, where angle A is 46.5 degrees, side B is 10.5, and side C is 18. I'm going to start by drawing my general triangle. 46.5 degrees goes here, side B is here, and side C is here. When I go to solve a triangle, I like to make a little chart, and I'd like you to make the little chart because I think it organizes the data nicely. I always start with the givens. Because I think it's really nice, it kind of helps you determine what you need to find first. Well, I need to find side A first. So in order to find side A squared, it's going to be the sum of the other two sides squared minus 2 times the other two sides times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 46.5. Don't forget, when you're done doing this, you have to square root the answer so that you know what A actually is. A should be 13.2. So now I know I can put 13.2 here. Now to finish the problem off, I need to find angles B and C. I only need to find one of them, and you have the choice. You can use the law of cosines or the law of sines. It really doesn't matter. I'll use the law of sines now to find angle B. So the sine of 46.5 over 13.2 is going to equal the sine of b over 10.5. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to divide by the 13.2. I'm going to take the inverse sine of the answer. And I'm going to find out that b is approximately 35.3 degrees. Well, now that I know angles a and b, I can just subtract them from 180 to find angle c. And now my triangle has been solved. In navigation, a direction is often given as something called a bearing, that is, an acute angle measured from due north or due south. So a bearing of north 30 degrees east would be here. You would start with the fact that north is above your, what we would consider to be the x-axis and it would be 30 degrees away from the north part of the axis. So north 60 degrees west would be here, where this would be the 60 degrees. South 70 degrees west would be here, where this would be the 70 degrees. And south 50 degrees east would be over here, where this would be the 50 degrees. A pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction north 20 degrees east, flying at 200 miles per hour. After one hour, he makes a course correction and heads in the direction of north 40 degrees east. Half an hour after that, engine trouble forces him to make an emergency landing. 
Find the distance between the airport and his final landing point, and find the bearing from the airport to his final landing point. Well, first we need to make kind of a, a little picture to help us understand what's going on. So I'm going to do this. Now let me do this instead. All right, so here's a little coordinate plane, which kind of tells us north, south, east, and west. The pilot starts off going in the direction of north 20 degrees east. That means he's going to start going this way. Here's my north 20 degrees east, and there's my 20 degrees. Well, all of a sudden he hits some point, and he makes a course correction. And now he's going to go north 40 degrees east. So I'm going to make another little coordinate plane here. And he's actually going to go off like this. And here's 40 degrees. Well, then he has his engine trouble. He has to stop. So we want to figure out the distance between the airport and his final landing place. So we want to know this length right here. Now, he, they told me he was, he was flying 200 miles per hour. And this length here was one hour. So he must have gone 200 miles. So I know a little bit here, since this length here was over a half an hour, if he's, driving, if he's flying 200 miles an hour for half an hour, he must have gone 100 miles. In order to use the law of cosines to solve this problem for x, I'm going to need to know an angle, and preferably this angle up here. Well, here's what's happening. Since this is 20, this part right here, is 20. This is 90. So 90 plus 20 is 110. Over here is a right angle. Well, part of it's 40, so this must be 50. So 20 plus 90 plus 50 is 160. So if I call this A, B, and C, we'll call angle B 160 degrees. So now I can use the law of cosines to find the missing side, which is going to tell me the distance between when the plane started at the airport till it landed. So x squared is going to equal 200 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 200 times 100 times the cosine of 160 degrees. Again, don't forget to take the square root of the answer at the end. The answer is going to be approximately 295.95 miles. The second part wanted to know what his bearing would be from the airport to his final landing point. To find the second part, which is the bearing from the airport to his final landing place, we need to know this angle here. Well, we already know the 20 degree part. We need to find this angle. Well, now that we know some information about this triangle, we can find it. I know that the sine of 160 degrees over 295.95 must equal the sine of angle A, because that's the one we want to find, over 100. I can use the law of sines here to find this angle here. So if I cross multiply divide by 295.95 and take the inverse sign, I'm going to find out that A is approximately 6.636 degrees. But remember, that's just this part here. That's not the bearing. The bearing is how far away from north. So you have to add that other 20 back into it. So we find out that it's 26.636 degrees and it's north 26.636 degrees east. Another formula to help us find the area of a triangle if we don't know the height, also known as the altitude, is Hero or Heron's formula. 
Hero's formula says that the area of a triangle is the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where a, b, and c are the sides of the triangle, and s is half the perimeter. Let's use Hero's formula to find an area. A businessman wishes to buy a triangular lot in a busy downtown location. The lot frontages on three adjacent streets of length 125, 280, and 315 feet. Find the area of the lot. Well, in order to find the area, you need to first find this el elusive number s. s, we said, is one-half the perimeter. And the perimeter of a triangle means you just add all the sides. So we add all the sides, we divide it in half, and we find out that s is 360. Now to find the area, I'm just going to plug it into the formula. So 360 times 360 minus 125, 360 minus 280, and 360 minus 315. Now order does not matter with plugging in the side length. So you could have started with 360 minus 315. It doesn't matter because we're multiplying these quantities together. My recommendation is if you have the old operating system on your calculator, you perform the operations under the radical first and then take the square root. We're going to find out that the area of this lot is 17,452 and the units of measurement are feet squared.